Markets move with the Senate runoff results coming in. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Progressive Insurance, offering Snapshot, a program that adjusts insurance rates based on safe driving habits. Now that's progressive. Learn more at Progressive.com or 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. And by UKG, Ultimate Kronos Group offers HR solutions to connect modern workforces. UKG.com, our purpose is people. I'm David Brancaccio. Support by voters for Democrats in Georgia is suggesting to market participants there could be more economic stimulus to pull the U.S. out of its COVID recession. The benchmark interest rate, the yield on the government's 10-year note, has crossed above 1% for the first time since March. Let's bring in Karen Petru, the co-founder and managing partner at Federal Financial Analytics in Washington. The fundamental lesson the market is taking, and I, I hope for a change the market is right, is that these close races signal not the fractious, ferocious, uh, and just nasty Congress that conventional wisdom seems to expect, but actually a functioning American government where the dominant force is the more moderate middle, because they're going to be the margin on every vote in the Senate. It's not the left, it's not the right, it's going to be the middle. If you're right and the scenario is moderates are emboldened by whatever comes out of Georgia here, do you think that suggests that we'll have finally more spending on infrastructure? I do. There's also in the moderate middle a good deal of concern about runaway deficits. And they're going to be looking for long-term spending like infrastructure for sustained economic growth, not for more covid uh, one-off checks, these so-called sugar highs. Karen Petru at Federal Financial Analytics. Thank you. Thank you. Just now, the ADP survey found that 123,000 fewer people were on payrolls in December. Actual declines like this are rare. Friday's the official jobs report. Stocks are mixed with the Dow future up two tenths percent, but the Nasdaq future down 1.4 percent. Now to the latest forecast for the world economy. Let's go to the source, David Malpass, president of the World Bank. Welcome back. Thanks, David. Good to be on. What's the latest calculation you have there? A nice, vigorous V-shaped recovery for the world finally here in 2021? Boy, I wish, but our outlook right now is that it's more of a, a subdued recovery. You know, it's a comeback from a bad year in 2020, but not strong enough for my taste. Uh, one key variable is vaccines. If they can be deployed really fast, including to the developing world, that would improve it and maybe turn us into a V. Now, in the developed world, there's been an extraordinary amount of borrowing to deal with the emergency that's upon us. But also there's borrowing uh, in emerging markets and the poorest countries as well. Uh, a lot of debt moving forward can be a problem. It can be a problem. And there's also already this uh, massive inequality in that the advanced economies have been able to buy assets of, of higher income people, of uh, corporate bonds, for example, municipal bonds. But for the developing world, that hasn't uh, really been possible. What they are doing is uh, running bigger deficits and adding to debt. But I think the bigger problem was they already had a lot of debt prior to the pandemic. So what we're working on is trying to reduce that debt substantially in 2021. Well, at least interest rates are low. Can't that help the developing world as they try to borrow? It does provide some opportunity for them. But the question is how much investment do they actually get from the savers in the advanced economies? Uh, and one of the problems is they're mostly buying their own assets. They buy mortgage-backed securities or they buy government bonds. And to make matters a little bit worse, the advanced economies are financing their purchases with short-term financing. For example, Treasury bills are one source of financing for the U.S. government and the Federal Reserve borrows from banks heavily. And that takes money away from what could be invested into the developing world. So the reality is we're not seeing nearly enough investment in the developing world, even though interest rates are low uh, in the advanced economies. David Malpass, president of the World Bank. Always good to talk to you. Good to talk with you, David. 
The World Bank is expecting 4% growth worldwide for this year, but only 1.6% of the world can't get vaccine distribution right. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by GEP. GEP helps businesses transform supply chains with strategy, managed services, and AI-based cloud-native software, including the GEP Smart Digital Procurement Platform and GEP Next, real-time supply chain visibility and management software. Learn more at GEP.com. And by C3.ai. C3.ai software enables organizations to use artificial intelligence at enterprise scale, solving previously unsolvable business problems. Learn more at C3.ai. And by Indeed, committed to delivering quality candidates so businesses can focus on interviewing people with the skills they need. Learn more at Indeed.com slash credit. The pandemic meant canceled weddings last year. Now, a study of five states out of Bowling Green State University suggests there's also been a big drop in divorces, down 36 percent in, for instance, New Hampshire. But it may not be because love springs eternal. Here's Marketplace's Samantha Fields. The thing about divorce is it's expensive. If you have complex issues or, you know, custody stuff, you probably need an attorney. Michelle O'Neill is a divorce lawyer in Dallas, Texas. There ends up being a duplication of housing. So you have to create the duplicate furniture. And then you have the electric bill, all the costs of a normal house. And right now, a lot of people don't have that money to spend. That is likely a big reason the divorce rate has dropped more than 20% during the pandemic in four of the five states the study looked at. Krista Payne is one of the researchers, and she says the same thing happened during the Great Recession. And much of that was found to be caused by economic resources and just loss of jobs and less resources to get divorced. The uncertainty of the last year and the temporary closures of offices and courts likely also played a role. And the other thing about divorce is divorce takes time. Couples who might not be getting along now because of the pandemic, Payne says, may not officially get divorced for a while. I'm Samantha Fields for Marketplace. And I'm David Brancaccio. You're listening to the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media. WNYC supporters include Netflix presenting Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Viola Davis and Chadwick Boseman star in this adaptation of the August Wilson play about the 1920s Mother of the Blues. Now on Netflix, awards eligible. 